This is where the fun begins. Hello there. How's it going? Hey everyone, Hybrid Toy Reviews here, and today I want to bring you the Star Wars The Black Series Clones of the Republic Mace Windu and 187th Clone Trooper 2-Pack. This is a really cool Hasbro Pulse and Shop Disney exclusive. Don't think it's dropped on Shop Disney yet, just Hasbro Pulse. I want to give a special thanks to 212 Hunter for helping me get a hold of three of this set. Wanted to army build the clones, and we're going to do a Mace Windu giveaway here very soon. So without further ado, let's see what we're getting in this set. Let's get into the review. All right. Here is our Black Series Clones of the Republic 2-pack. I think this is one of our first 2-packs with a window in the line, actually, so that's pretty cool. Actually, I think there was that concept art one back in the day with the Obi-Wan Vader, but one of the first main available ones, so that's really cool. It is basically a double-mirrored version of the modern packaging with two tapers and a big window below a Black Series logo above the Clones of the Republic in very, very light blue. I do like this coloring. Mace Windu and the 187th Legion Clone Trooper Warning 4 Plus Hasbro. This side of the box features some really cool artwork of Sam Jackson as Clone Wars Mace Windu. Really loving that. Saber up over his head. Just a really cool pose. This side of the box features the 187th Legion Clone Trooper. Also looking really cool. And if you flip it around back, you get another look at both of those arts, your Black Series logo up top, the names, uh, bios in varying languages, pause and read whichever one best applies. It isn't about the characters per se, it just says that Mace Windu led clones in the Clone War, so it's very vague. It is the number one in the Clones of the Republic subline, you got a bunch of legal stuff, Disney, Hasbro, barcode, legal stuff below. Up top, there's no window, and there's just a big hanger, actually a big... Like a very thick hanger. It's not your normal hook, you know, it's actually like a tab that you have to push the peg through. That's good because it is a little weightier than your standard Black Series packaging, but it's not like super heavy either. So, all in all, it is what you would expect on a Black Series 2 pack. Let's go ahead and open it up and take a look at what's going on inside the box. All right, here's Mace Windu and the 187th clone out of the packaging. As always, we'll start with the accessories. Let's start with Mace Windu's. He comes with his signature purple-bladed dark lightsaber, or purple-bladed lightsaber. Features a very nice dark shade of purple to the blade. It catches the light very nicely, and it just feels like the right choice for a shade of purple. The hilt is painted very well with all of the gold and black punch-ins over the silver bite base of the hilt. Very well done. I do like how this turned out a lot. It is very standard with the Black Series to have a removable lightsaber blade. And the hilt features a peg on the side of it. However, when you go to take a look at Mace Windu's belt, he does not feature a hole to peg the saber into. We will get into that when we get into the reuse here, because ultimately this pack is a lot of reuse. There's not as much new as you may be hoping. To take a look at the Clone Trooper now, we'll set Mace off to the side. The Clone Trooper comes with the standard two blasters, being the shorter clone blaster in a pretty dark gray color, but it's gray, it's not black. It looks all right, good sculpt. He also comes with the longer clone rifle in that same light or dark gray. It's pretty good color, I do like how this looks, but yeah, also not in black, which would be like the perfect choice. The clone comes with a removable helmet, which looks very good. It is basically your clone shock trooper deco, but it is done in purple instead of red, and it has a lot of like dark blue going on, kind of like a weird like slate gray blue, and it looks really nice. I do like how this helmet turned out, and this helmet is removable, revealing a clone trooper face underneath, which looks really good. I don't quite think it's photo real. I think it is paint, just looking at the eyes, but it's done very very well. I do like how this head sculpt turned out. Spinning him around, see he just has very nice textured hair. As far as the helmet goes, there's a little bit of a snug fit, but it does fit over nicely, and that is good. So the Clone Trooper going from the neck down is the 2020 body. This pack must have been in the works for a little bit. It unfortunately came out after the 2023 body came out, which features some upgraded articulation, but I will genuinely say I do enjoy the 2020 body, so I'm not upset about getting this. Now, this Clone Trooper is a really cool repaint. This is based on a uh, Hasbro 3.75 battle pack from like 06, where Hasbro basically said, Mace Windu's Clone Troopers would be purple if he had a Legion. And so they just made purple Shock Troopers for the pack. And it's just kind of been that ever since. Now, to bring in a comparison, 
Um, in the Clone Wars, they did end up giving Mace Windu a legion. In Season 7, it is the 187th legion. However, they are not purple. They have maroon markings, which actually matches Commander Pons from Season 2 of the Clone Wars. So it's kind of like a brown-maroon kind of coloring. And there was an issue with this figure where it was done like an off-white instead of a stark white. I don't believe that to be accurate. It doesn't annoy me too much, but I know there are some people that are just absolutely pissed off that that happened. But these are both... On the same base body, but as you see, there is a lot of difference going on with the Deco, and the this one being the Walgreens exclusive one does not feature a removable helmet. There's a head under there that the head is the helmet is glued onto. It is unpainted white. So this is the canon version. This is the non-canon version. But let's be fair. This one is the cool one. I'm happy to have both in the line. Um, the 187th, as appearing in the Clone Wars, was not a figure that I thought we would necessarily ever get. I suppose I never thought we would get this in Black Series also. But I'm happy to have both. I just, I like Clone Troopers. So, going down from the helmet and after doing our comparison, as mentioned, the whole thing is just a Shock Trooper deco. So, the red chest is purple here. Same with the shoulder pads, the belt, and then the boots. He features that kind of slate gray blue for stripes around the biceps and on the upper thighs. Spinning him around, you see there is no real paint other than the deco just showing you what legion he's affiliated with. There's no weathering or anything, but that's fine. I do like a nice, shiny, clean clone trooper, and this guy does exactly that. He's just really cool and something that I'm really happy that we have in the collection. Let's run through the articulation. It's a 2020 body. You know what you're getting here, but we'll do it again anyway. Double ball joint and neck allows the head to look that far up, that far down. Get all the side to side you could ever want and a ton of pivot. The arms can come up to a T-pose, but you have to work the shoulder pads up over the torso a little bit. There's a deep butterfly joint in there. You can 360 degree the shoulder. Single jointed elbows go to 90 degrees and then swivel. 360 at the wrist with the left hinging in and out and the right hinging up and down. There's a mid-torso ball joint that allows you to crunch the figure that far forward, that far back. Get some side to side and a bunch of rotation. His legs can come out not quite to a true split, but pretty wide. There's an upper thigh rotation buried under the thigh plate there. It actually turns really nice. Single jointed knees can go past 90, rotate at the knee, and then the feet can point almost straight down pretty far forward, and there's a forward-facing pin for Rocker. So that's basically it for the 187th Clone Trooper. It is a really cool repaint. And I'm totally fine with that. This Clones of the Republic line is going to be a really fun line for those of us that like clones. That are okay with them just taking a base body and repainting them over and over again. Which is what clones are. And all in all, I'm just really satisfied to have this version of the clones in the collection. Setting the 187th off to the side. Let's bring in the Mace Windu. So the Mace Windu looks really good. Bringing him in, we'll take a look at that face sculpt. That is pretty dead on Samuel Jackson. I'm really liking what we're getting here. He uh, has no textured hair sculpt because he has no hair. Um, there's actually, ooh, there's on this particular one, there's a little swirly twirly marbling in the plastic right there. So he has a singular hair, I guess, in the back of his head. That's maybe not ideal. But we'll get over that. Not the end of the world. Um, but yeah, very nice done face there. It is not super shiny. It reflects the light. Something to note on the 187th is that it definitely did not get the super glossy face that people like to complain about. Um, Mace is a little glossier than the clone, but he is not shiny like people were complaining. So that's really nice to see. Um, this is basically your Episode 3 Mace Windu for everything except for the arms so definitely a lot of reuse going on here he's wearing his dark tan robes with the dark brown or with the medium brown belt a little silver buckle painted in in the center there pouch around back he's got the uh, white pants and the brown boots going on there the uh, big key difference to this one being the 08 clone wars mace is that he is wearing the gauntlets which look really good this one is all white it features the uh, communicator on the wrist and the hand has a back plate and fingerless gloves this gauntlet is super cool it features the jedi order symbol there and then another white hand plate now i just want to show what's going on with the parts here as mentioned there's definitely some reuse going on so here is our red box, and then was also 
reissued on the Phantom Menace retro card back Mace Windu, and just putting them side by side, and the legs are the same, the skirt's the same, the upper torso's the same, and the upper forearms, or the uh, like the bicep area is the same. And honestly, the head sculpt might be the same. They're very, very similar. So a lot of the same stuff going on here. And where the forearms come from is from this 03 Clone Wars Mace Windu we got, which also features the same legs, and then they had to do a unique upper torso and belt. Um, the only thing truly unique on this figure is the hands, because both of these other Mace Windus feature hands that don't wear gloves. Um, the lightsaber on the original Mace Windu did not feature a belt hook. The lightsaber on the 03 Clone Wars Mace Windu did. Or I say hook, I should mean peg, because he could peg his saber on the belt. Meaning the lightsaber accessory that comes with this Mace Windu that has the belt peg comes from the 03 Clone Wars figure as well. Not super nitpicky when it comes to reuse like that, but I just feel that for those who care about that kind of thing, that that is where the parts come from. So I don't mind that because it's given us a very faithful recreation of the character, and I love to see it. Um, to run through our articulation, it features a double ball jointed neck, which allows him to look that far up, that far down. He has a bunch of rotation, a ton of pivot. His arms come up to a T-pose. There's a butterfly joint in there. The uh, upper uh, tunic is very rubbery, so it gets out of the way, which is nice to see. Um, the upper tunic, however, does hang over the shoulder joint a bit. So you can do a 360, but it really wants to push the arm out a little bit. It's not super ideal, but it's not terrible. Single jointed elbows. You can go past 90 degrees and rotate at the elbow. There's no gauntlet swivel, but there is a 360 degree found at the wrist with the left hinging or the, you know, the left hinging in and out and the right hinging up and down. Mid torso ball joint allows him to crunch that far forward, that far back, get some good side to side and twist. His legs can come out almost to a true splits. They can kick pretty straight forward. There's not a lot of back going on there. There's an upper thigh rotation with double jointed pinned knees which can go all the way up and kick his own backside, straightening those back out. And the feet can point super straight down. A little forward, you have to kind of work it up over the strap there. And then there's a forward-facing pin for Rocker, allowing you to get him into some pretty decently wide stances with both feet flat on the ground. To do some size comparisons, Mace stands at about the same height as his clones. I feel that he would be taller than an unarmored clone, like if you took the helmet off, and I feel that would be accurate. I feel with the armor, you can make the excuse that they would be about the same height. For some other comparisons, because of course this is Clone Wars Mace Windu, here is the Clone Wars Anakin Skywalker, the Clone Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi. Ah, oh shit. Well, that was bad. I think I just broke my Anakin Saber Blade on stream, so that sucks. Definitely not what I wanted to do today. But we'll also compare the original 187th clone and the Tan B1 Battle Droid, which is probably not going to stand. Now he stands, as I said that he wouldn't. All in all, I feel that these scale really nicely together. Let's get into the wrap-up. All right, so end of the day, what do I think of this Mace Windu and 187th Clone, Clones of the Republic 2-pack? You know, I love both figures. This is an excellent clone repaint. This is an amazing Mace Windu kit bash. And independently, I consider them great figures. I am annoyed that this is a multi-pack. People had been asking for ages for a Clone Trooper repaint subline. It was never a, we want Jedi and Clone 2-packs. And if it has to be done in this two-pack format, give us a Jedi and their clone commander, not the main trooper. Because my thing is, while the 187th in purple is not a clone that I want to go and get a thousand of, like 501st or whatever. But I'd like to be able to buy a few of them and not end up with a few Mace Windus. These should have definitely been independently packed from one another. Um, this next clone of the Republic pack that's coming is Yoda and comic-based Gree, which at least Gree is like a named clone. You don't want to army build him. So that is nice that, we, you know, we don't have to do it there. Uh, and I hope that they've at least kind of learned from some of the backlash because I'm not the only one annoyed by it being packed this way. So independently, don't get me wrong, I love these figures and I recommend this pack. 
But, uh, God, this Mace Windu is going to be a worthless figure. Because you know how many of these are going to be on eBay in the next couple of weeks? Where people bought three of the pack because that was the max you could get on Hasbro Pulse. And they're going to keep the three clones and sell the extra two Mace Windus. I'm calling it. By the end of the year, you can get this Mace Windu for ten bucks. That's that is my uh, That is my market prediction. So... Anyway, that's it for now. I've got other videos to go work on, so thanks a bunch for watching. It means a lot that you did. If you enjoyed, you should leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that end of video stuff. Check out my channel memberships down below for 99 cents a month. You can become an HTR super fan. It just gives me a little kickback, a little token of appreciation, and as a token of appreciation to you, your username gets put in the end credits of every single video I do, so keep an eye out for the names at the end, and join if you'd like to be in the next video. Until next time, may the force be with each and every one of you, and goodbye.